welcome back to Country Basket Weaving. I'm Sandy Atkinson, your hostess. The basket we'll be working on today is our egg basket and the cut pattern, well, there's really no cut pattern for today, but the material pattern for today is as follows. You'll need two 10 inch hoops, quarter inch flat or caning, and number six round. The egg basket we kind of surmise was originated in the British Isles or somewhere in Europe. We're not really sure where it exactly came from. The hoops that we're going to use, this happens to be about a 10 inch hoop. You'll find if you look around your hoop that you'll have a glue line here and one in here. This is where the wood overlaps. What I want you to do is come in here and just kind of eyeball halfway between there. Take your tape measure and measure around the hoop. Oops. And I'm not really terrific with fractions, so I'm going to mark it here. I'll show you kind of a cheater's way to do this. Divide your tape measure. Find your center over here, which is a fraction. Take the hoop. What we're trying to do is find the center on the other side and put a pencil mark there. Okay? Then you'll take two hoops and you'll fit them together like I've done here. Do this on both hoops, mark both hoops, and then fit them inside lining up your lines. I'd like to take a minute and show you how to create one of your own hoops. And these make really pretty handles. The basket that you saw at the opening was done this way. You're going to take a long piece of number six round or number eight and put a tie in it. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Just like, you know, just a regular tie, like you're tying your shoes. And you're going to measure this tie to the size of your hoop. And then hold it with your hand and kind of keep intertwining these. Let me get this one out of the way. Can you see what I'm doing? And I'm just going over and around and over and around. Then I'm coming back here, grabbing the other sides, and this made a groove right in here where the two come together. Take and follow that right along the groove. Let me put a clip up here so this will hold. You're going to follow right along the groove and do this over and over, building up the sides of your hoop, and when you finish, you'll have a hoop like this. And you can use this for your handle piece also. Get started on our God's eye. You can, I'm using caning today. I like caning for God's eyes. I want you to think of this hoop. This is one, two, three, and four. Maybe we can shot from the overhead cam. We'll be able to catch this a little better. This is one, two, three, and four. You're going to start at one. Hold it with your thumb. Go around two, go behind two, cross over two, cross over three. Pull your excess through. Go behind three, cross over three, cross over four. Take a minute and pull all this extra through. Oh, mine's caught here. There we go. Go behind four. Now, when you come back here, I want you to overlap, not overlap, I want you to just butt up to the piece that, was, that preceded it. Again, we have to pull all this length through. I'm going behind one, over one, over two, and then behind two. You should do this for about eight rows, and you'll end up with a really pretty God's eye. I like a larger God's eye. I'm going to cut this one and I'm going to the other side to show you how to finish it up. After you've done eight rows, I have eight rows here, you're going to count your rows on the back. Okay, you can see the rows here and you're going to count them along. Then you're going to finish on number one and simply wrap this around and come up here, turn it over and on the back, tuck that end up about two rows. It works easier if you put a little point on it. There you go. And give it a tug. And that's how we end that. And of course, both of them need to be ended on the bottom rim. 
This one I've already done. This one's done in pink. I don't know if you can see the color here, but I have pink God's eyes. Now I'm going to take my number six round and I'm going to put a point on the end. This doesn't have to be wet, by the way. It's real flexible. You're going to take, we're going to put in our longest piece first, and I'm simply inserting it behind the God's eye. I guarantee you, see, it's going to pop out, so don't get upset. Just be patient with it. This is going to be a very conservative egg basket, so I'm going to make this my longest rib. Come over here and measure where it should be and cut it off, cut it at a point, and stick it behind here, okay? Now, taking another piece with a point on it, I'm going to eyeball, and this is an eyeball basket. There's not much measuring with a tape measure. You're going to eyeball between the bottom and the rib I just put in. Kind of find a halfway point on height. And that looks pretty good right there. Bring it over, and we're going to cut another one. Whenever I cut a rib for one side, I have to go back and cut it for the other side. I want you to think of this basket as two baskets now. We have this side and this side, and it's a mirror image. So I'm going to pull out my shorter one, measure a second one, and I'll put them both back in. And again, I, like I say, I know they're going to pop out on you. You just have to have patience with this basket. And I need to pull out my longest one. Come back here. I have to get another piece of six round. Put a point on the end because that helps it stay in there. Some people take a pencil sharpener and will sharpen a point that way and that works fine too. Put both pieces back in. We're going to start off with two ribs, which really is four ribs because I'm doing a mirror image, remember. We're always going to add our ribs in multiples of two. There's a reason for that, and we'll get into that a little later. This one's popping out. Let me put a little sharper point on it here. This one's popping out, too. Okay, I'm going to come in here and get some number a uh, quarter inch, flat, flat. I like to start with a flat point here. Right and wrong side of this reed doesn't matter because we're going to be doing turns and both sides are going to be on the outside. You must start on the top of your center spoke, and that's right here. And I'm going to start on there and I'm going under. But to save myself a little time, I'm going to come in here and slip it under this one. I'm still on top here. I do a little filler row in here. It's what I call my short row. I'm going to turn on this first rib that I put in. And this is where you need lots of patience because that thing does not want to stay in there. I'm going to make my turn here. I'm following a simple over-under pattern. Very gently bring this piece through. Come up here. I'm under my center rim. I'm over. And then I'm turning. This is popped out again. keeps popping out of me. I just have to have patience. Come around here and I'm turning and this again is my short row. Kind of come back and pull this through gently. Once you get this row in, it gets a little easier once you get this side in. Okay. Kind of check these. They should be about the same distance. This one and this one here. Okay, and then you're coming around. I want to do one more row. This time I'm going to go all the way up and turn on my rim. And I'm turning on my rim and coming back. When I come from the right going left, I will always go under my center rim. When I come from left going right, I will always go over my center rim. That's just a rule of thumb that will really help you double check yourself to make sure you're on it. Okay, I have the hardest two rows in. 
What I need to do at this point is go back to the other side and put the same two rows in and it's much easier on the second part than it is on the first part. I've already got this one started. This basket, I've taken number eight and I've used, made two of my own hoops rather than purchased hoops. What we're going to do now is add more ribs. Remember what I said, we have to add two on each side or multiples of two. Got a point on there. I'm going to eyeball again halfway between my center rib and the rib over here, the, the second one I put in. And I'm going to eyeball and find the halfway height between those two. Come back here and cut it. Always have to cut an identical twin to it. And I go ahead and insert that one in. When you get to this point, after you cut them, put them right in. That way you won't confuse where they should go. And they simply insert right next to the one it's side next to. You're going to run it right down beside the one it rests next to. Okay, I have to add another. There's no saying how many ribs that you're going to need in this basket. It's simply eyeballed. We'll keep filling it in. Again, I'm working here with this is the first one I put in and this is my outer rim. I'm going to eyeball halfway between and we're going to insert another set. Once you get going on it, you can add more than two at a time or two on each side. You, but just keep in mind you must add them in multiples of two. That's so your pattern will come out as we keep working it. And I'm going to insert it down there, okay? Now I'm coming up here in this row. When you do one row, one row consists of starting in the middle, coming up here to the rim, turning, coming back through the middle, coming up to this rim, turning, coming back to the middle. That's one row. It looks like two, but it's really one. So I'm starting in the middle. I'm going to divide the new ribs that I just put in. And it's going to look a little bit sloppy. This row here will help straighten it out. I'm over and under. I'm coming from the, oops, I made a mistake here. Let's see. And over, okay. When I come from the right, I'm always going under. Now I'm running out of a piece here. So I'm going to go back, take another piece. Let's take the piece over here. Cut it with a flat end. We're going to come back here and we're going to add a new piece. I'm going to simply overlap this new piece on the piece that ran out. It's not going to hide very well because these aren't very wide, but people won't see that there anyway. And then I'm going to continue right on weaving. I would like to do two more rows at this point before I start adding more ribs. I know I'm going to add more ribs. I'm going to need them because of the spacing. When I get my spacing, I should have approximately two finger marks or two finger lengths between each rib. And you can see I have a lot of ribs to keep adding onto this one. And then when you work this side, you must turn over and do the very same thing to the other side. Keep thinking of this as two baskets at this point. Then I want you, once we get some rows done and we get our ribs added, I have two finger lengths on this one, approximately all the way through. Then pick up your basket and kind of look at it and eyeball it and kind of adjust it because as you work with it, these are going to shift for you and so that you need to get the height, you need to get a nice oval round shape in here. An egg basket comes out to a point and then comes back in. So just come back here and kind of adjust all your ribs. Now what we're going to do, I have a total up here. We're going to count our rows on the top of the rim. Two, three, four. I have six rows here, I have six here, six on each side on all four sides. Now I'm, I'm ready to start filling in. And what happens is we have a shorter distance in here 
and it keeps getting wider as we go out and then it gets shorter in here again. So what we need to do is create some space, take up some space on these longer pieces to get equal one center piece that is this equal distance all the way from one end of the basket to the other. So I'm going to take another piece of my flat. I'm coming over here. Well, first of all, we're going to do some measuring. And like I say, I like to eyeball it. This one is approximately seven inches, and then it starts at seven and a quarter and builds up. So I know about in here, I'm going to have to build up. So I'm going to come on my third one up, and over here on my second one up, and I'm going to mark them. So as I come from this way, I'm going to turn here, and then here, and we'll turn here, and then we'll head back to the middle. Go ahead and mark the same ones on the other side. We'll take these off. I'm going to mark my third one up, my second one in, and then the one next here. Taking my quarter inch and following my pattern here I created with my clothespins, I'm going to weave this one back. So I'm starting a new piece. I had a pink color in here. Now I have a natural color. I'm going to come back and start it right about here, weaving right on top of the piece that ran out, or in this case I was changing colors, and again weaving it over and under. And I know this is my first pin here, so I'm going to turn Sneak that end under there, and I'm going to turn on this close pin. Pull my length through, come back and kind of make my turn a nice even turn. Weave it over and under. My second pin is here, and I'm going to turn here and go back. And you see how this is kind of building this up in here? And this is my pin over here, so I know I'm going to turn on this rib and work back. And I'm going back through the middle. I have to do the very same thing on the other side. Here's my close pins I've marked on this side so I know I'm coming way over to the farthest one and turning first. Pulling this length through. I know that's kind of a hassle, but you really need the length to work with. I think you'll find it a lot easier to do when you're home, too. Turn on the first close pin, work back over and under pattern. Until I come here, this is my second one, and work back to my third. When I finish this, I will end back in the middle because remember that's where we end our rows. Then I have to turn the basket over and do the very same thing, following the same pattern on the other side. So what I simply do is take my clothespins, leave them right on, and simply shift them to the other side, come over here and do the same pattern on this side. Keep building this up until you have a path running right along the center of your basket that is all the same length. Then you can go back to just your over, under rows, turning each time on your rim. I have one that we've almost finished. When you keep turning on these, you'll eventually end up with it closing in, and you have to know how to end your, your pattern here. This is my one coming from my left side, so I'm simply going to weave it over and under. You'll have to work back and forth inside your basket at this point. And this one I've worked with a grapevine. Can you see this? I've made the a grapevine out of the handle. This one has a three-point lashing on it sometimes referred to as half a god's eye. I'm coming from the right side now. 
Oops, I sure don't need all this length. Let me get rid of some of it. Coming from here, when you work with a grapevine, weave in between the vines in here. It lets some of them show and it makes it really pretty. I'm going to overlap the piece from the left and I'm simply going to weave that out. Let's put a little point on this. It'll travel a lot easier. There we go. I'm going to go through one more so I have a good lap on it. And I know that's not going to come out. Come in here and trim this off. When you do your turns back and forth, as you're building up your sides, you're going to get these little triangles in here too. But those are things that you just never saw before. Here's one here. You just never noticed them before, but they are there. This one I put some green in, used um, oval hoops, kind of a different way to do it too. There's lots of different ways to do baskets and don't, um, don't get stuck on, on doing them with all natural reed or, or one type. Go ahead and use your grapevines. Here's another grapevine one I did. Actually this is a, this is a boughten handle here, a boughten wreath. It's actually made out of number eight, and see the colors I have into it. Some variations of this basket. This is a hen basket. They actually put their little hens in here and took them off to market. The hen rested in there very easily. She didn't know she was going to market. This is just a smaller version of an egg basket. A melon basket, if you can see the bottom here, let me get a, an egg basket comes out here where a melon basket is more round. That's the only difference between the two. This is a fanny basket, and I know I have fun with this one with my students. A lot of them laugh about it. Uh, it was carried on the fanny of a horse, and it's what they carried their supplies in. That's where they got the name fanny basket. This one here is a watermelon basket, just a different shape, different kind. The basket that we will be working on next time is our cradle, and I'm sure that you create one of these, you'll have a beautiful family heirloom. Thank you for being with us.